What was Charlie Rich thinking when he announced John Denver is the CMA's Entertainer of the Year? What is Bobby Gentry's Ode to Billy Joe really about? When exactly did Hank Williams die? These classic country mysteries may never be solved. Jim Sullivan was a country blues musician with an edge of the psychedelic. He released two albums over the course of his career, and he had famous friends like actor Dennis Hopper. Then he disappeared and was never seen again. Sullivan had a family, but left them behind to go to Nashville for work, except that he never actually showed up. His wife Barbara got a call from him on March 5, 1975, the day after he left California. She asked him to tell her what was wrong, but he refused, as he instead said, You wouldn't believe it if I told you. Forget it. Just forget I said anything. That was their last phone call. Sullivan's car was found abandoned three days later in the small town of Santa Rosa, New Mexico. It contained his ID, a box of his albums, and his beloved guitar. The police investigation turned up no clues about where Jim was or why he disappeared. One local named Donald Sena thought that they didn't do a great job, though. As he put it, I always thought there was something strange about how that went down, why they didn't investigate it more. A search by family members and volunteers was more thorough. According to newspaper reporter Davy Delgado, there was no arroyo left unturned and no trace of him found. Hank Williams Sr. is one of the most famous country stars of all time, despite dying at the age of 29. Weirdly, no one knows exactly when he died. As reported by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution on New Year's Eve 1952, a 17-year-old Charles Carr was driving Williams 500 miles to get to a gig the next day. He realized that something was wrong with his passenger in the back seat in the early morning hours and detoured to a hospital. Williams was pronounced dead there, with January 1st, 1953 appearing as the date on his death certificate. Hank Williams' last journey began in Knoxville and ended in tragedy just up the road. But some people have different ideas about when Williams breathed his last. Tennessee Highway Patrol Corporal Swan Kitts pulled Carr over at 1 a.m. that morning for driving erratically and saw Williams in the back seat. He reported that the musician already, quote, looked dead, but was reassured by Carr that he was just under the power of a sedative. Could those injections of morphine given to him at a Knoxville hotel before getting back on the road have been what killed him? The doctor who gave them obviously didn't think so, as he said, The shots I gave Williams had absolutely nothing to do with his death. It is ridiculous to think that they did. But sometime after receiving the injections, William had to be brought to the car in a wheelchair. Some believe that he was already dead at that point, and his corpse was put in the car by people who thought that he was just out of it. After a decade of country music success, Bobby Gentry decided that performing had lost its appeal, so she went back to her normal life. She hasn't made a public appearance since 1981, but she left behind a mystery in a song that's been driving fans crazy ever since. Ode to Billy Joe tells the story of a girl who finds out during a family dinner that a boy named Billy Joe has killed himself by jumping off the Tallahatchie Bridge. It's implied that she and Billy Joe were sweet on each other and that they'd been spotted throwing something into the river below that same bridge shortly before he died. What did they throw? We may never find out. Gentry once explained her reasoning for keeping this important detail so vague by saying, First, it locks up a definite relationship between Billy Joe and the girl telling the story, the girl at the table. Second, the fact that Billy Joe was seen throwing something off the bridge, no matter what it was, provides a possible motivation as to why he jumped off the bridge the next day. As for the item that they threw, Gentry has never revealed what it was, although she's been asked all the time by fans and heard many theories like an engagement ring, a draft card, or even a baby. Eventually, a TV movie based on the song provided its own answer, The Girl's Childhood Doll, but that really disappointed fans. Don't seem like no good never come to nobody on this bridge. Country star Jim Reeves had a weird connection to John F. Kennedy's assassination. The biography Jim Reeves' is Untold Story, written by Larry Jordan, records a Texas radio station owner's account of what happened as news of the assassination unfolded in November 1963. As Lee Harvey Oswald's picture was shown on TV, Reeves told everyone who was watching that he recognized Oswald from seeing him on multiple occasions at the Longhorn Ballroom, where Reeves and his band often performed. It's also been contended that Reeves knew Oswald's killer, Jack Ruby, from the same place. In August the following year, Reeves was killed in a small private plane crash, and he had something mysterious with him. As songwriter John Loudermilk recounted, music producer Chet Atkins called me and said, Jim's down. He crashed last night. We need to go out and find him. And I said, why? And he said, he's got a briefcase that has some important papers in it that are private and nobody should have those. That briefcase was never found and the mystery deepened. While researching his biography, Larry Jordan got a phone call from someone who claimed to work for American intelligence and warned him to avoid looking too deeply into Reeves' crash. 
Charlie Rich had a 35-year career that included 11 number one records on the country charts and an Entertainer of the Year award from the Country Music Association of America in 1974. That honor meant that he would present the same award the following year, but that's when his career went up in flames, literally. Rich announced that John Denver was the winner, but then he did something inexplicable. As he took a step back and fished in his pocket for a lighter, then he lit the envelope on fire. Denver wasn't there to see this, but the audience was gobsmacked. What exactly was Rich trying to say? He never explained himself, so it's been left to others to theorize about his mysterious action, which incidentally got him banned from all future CMA award shows. Many people think he was mad about Denver's win, possibly because he didn't think he was really a country musician. There's also the fact that Rich has admitted that at the time he was on prescription pain medication that he washed down with multiple gin and tonics. His son Charlie Jr. had his own theory. He used bad judgment. He was human after all. I know the last thing my father would have wanted to do was set himself up as judge of another musician. Bobby Mackey's Music World is a popular honky-tonk in Kentucky, owned by the country singer of the same name. There is a sign on the door that reads, Warning to our patrons, this establishment is purported to be haunted. Management is not responsible and cannot be held liable for any actions of any ghosts slash spirits on these premises. The bar has appeared on many ghost hunting shows and is purported to be the site of many grisly crimes over the years. Almost all of it is legend, but one horrific crime did take place nearby, and the victim is said to be one of the ghosts that haunts the building today. In 1896, five months pregnant Pearl Bryan arrived in Cincinnati, Ohio in order to procure an abortion. The father of her child and his roommate were waiting for her at the train station. What happened next is a mystery, but somehow Brian ended up dead. When her body was found, it was missing its head. Despite extensive searches, the head was never found. One legend says that it was thrown into an already bloody well of a nearby slaughterhouse across the river in Kentucky. And the building that housed the slaughterhouse is now the home of Bobby Mackey. I don't know if I would be adamant about Bobby Mackey's closing its doors but I think something will do it for them. There's only one known photo of the Weem string band, as they literally appeared out of nowhere and disappeared right after. During the 1920s, hillbilly string band music was all the rage, and the Weem string band recorded a single record for Columbia. Their playing style made the band even more mysterious. Despite living in the backcountry of Perry County, Tennessee, they held and played their instruments in distinctive ways that indicated they almost certainly had professional violin training which seems impossible for people who came from somewhere so remote. Plus, one of the members played the cello, which you normally wouldn't find in a string band. And they didn't play in the normal style either, instead producing what was essentially an experimental record at a time when no one in the genre was doing anything like that. The record they produced had an A-side called Greenback Dollar as well as a B-side. That was all these virtuosos ever recorded. There are six people in the photo, and we only know four of them. Dick, Frank, and Jesse Weems, and their brother-in-law, Alvin Condor. The other two are thought to be younger Weems brothers, but their names were lost to history. That is, until a member of the online forum Banjo Hangout contended that the other two were Atlas Dodge Condor and Ray Hinson. The explanation was anecdotal, so whether or not it's true is up to folk tradition. William Curley Sheldon was a member of the band Dixie Six, stars of the 1950s TV program Hillside Hoedown. He was also a confirmed ladies' man. The mysterious story of his death was recounted in 2019 by the Evansville Courier and Press. According to local bar owner Oswald Combs, Curly was something else. He sang those old love ballads and women just went crazy. He had no trouble getting all the women he wanted. But this would become a problem. Sheldon once told Henderson, Kentucky County Sheriff Lee Williams that a man wanted to kill him. When Williams asked why that was, Sheldon admitted that he'd been with his wife multiple times. So the sheriff told him to leave that man's wife alone. Three years after that conversation, on December 5, 1957, Sheldon was found in his car outside a VFW hall. He'd been beaten to death, pummeled so badly that the cops who arrived on the scene mistakenly thought he'd been shot in the head. Despite an extensive investigation in which over 100 people were questioned, nobody was ever arrested, let alone convicted for the murder. But Sheriff Williams claimed to know what the motive would have been, as he told the Evansville Courier at the time, Sheldon was caught with a woman by a man, maybe the woman's husband, and the man simply beat him to death. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. In 1978, First Lady of Country Music Tammy Wynette told People Magazine about the terrifying carjacking and kidnapping she'd been the victim of a few weeks earlier. As she recounted, I felt a poke in my side and heard a man's voice say, Drive. All I could see was a brown glove, a lot of hair on his arm, and two inches of gun barrel. 
Wynette was finally released 80 miles from Nashville as she then fled for help. She had visible injuries on her face and neck where the kidnapper had punched, slapped, and strangled her. But there's a lot of reason to doubt Wynette's story. Her children contend that she was in an abusive marriage and the injuries were caused by her husband, their stepfather, George Ritchie. Her daughter, Georgette Jones, wrote in her memoir, The Three of Us, she did admit to my sister that when all that stuff came out about her being kidnapped in 1978, that she and Richie had been in a fight and he had beaten her. He threatened to destroy her life and write a tell-all book, so she decided to stay with him so he concocted the kidnapping story for PR. Richie has called the abuse accusations preposterous, and Wynette never publicly recanted her kidnapping story. If you or someone you know is dealing with domestic abuse, you can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. You can also find more information, resources, and support at their website. 